Hello, and welcome to another RPD video. Today, we'll be discussing major and minor connectors. Let's begin with major connectors. First up, the functions of major connectors. The most basic function of the major connector is to connect the different parts of the RPD together. The major connector also distributes the applied forces to the abutment teeth and the tissues. Major connectors also contribute to the cross arch stabilization of the RPD. Now let's move on to the requirements of major connectors. First and foremost is rigidity. In order to fulfill any of its functions, the major connector needs to be rigid and resist flexure. The RPD needs to also maintain adequate distance for hygiene between it and the free gingival margin. On the maxillary arch, it's 6 mm, and on the mandibular arch, it's 3 mm. Whenever the major connector crosses the free gingival margin, it needs to do so in a straight line. And whenever it crosses the midline, it also needs to do that in a straight line. Now let's go over some of the more common types of major connectors. Let's start with the palatal bar major connector. It's generally less than 8 mm in anterior posterior dimension and is indicated in bilateral tooth bound short edential spans. It's not very comfortable and not often used. Next up, let's move on to the palatal strap major connector. Palatal strap measures about 8 to 20 mm and is generally indicated in RPDs with bilateral tooth supported edential spans. Now let's talk about the AP or anterior posterior strap. This major connector is composed of two individual straps, each about 8 to 20 millimeters. The AP strap is one of the most widely used major connectors and can be used with the majority of RPD cases. Next up, let's talk about the palatal plate major connector. Palatal plates usually measure more than 20 millimeters and are indicated in distal extension cases where the last tooth is a canine or a first premolar. Now let's move on to the horseshoe major connector. Horseshoe major connectors should be greater than 8 mm in thickness and are indicated in class 4 cases as well as cases with a pronounced maxillary tuberosity. Now let's move on to the mandibular major connectors, starting with the lingual bar. Lingual bars need to be about 5 mm in thickness for adequate strength and are indicated in cases with about 8 mm of vestibular depth. To understand why that is, we'll need to take a closer look at the anatomy of a lingual bar. For educational purposes, let's slice that RPD in half. From that view, you can see a few things. First of all, in order to have enough thickness for the major connector and enough space between it and the free gingival margin, you need to have 5 and 3 millimeters respectively. That adds up to about 8 millimeters of vestibular depth. Another thing you'll notice is that the lingual bar major connector does not actually touch the soft tissues. This is called relief. Relief is important in areas such as this because the floor of the mouth is non-keratinized and can be very easily traumatized if contact is sustained. Another thing you'll notice is that the lingual bar major connector has a cross section of a half pear shape. Now let's move on to our last major connector, the lingual plate major connector. These are indicated in cases with less than 8 mm of vestibular depth or cases with periodontally weakened teeth. It's important to have rests on either side of the major connector in order to transmit the forces along the long axis of the abutment teeth. Lingual plates usually follow a scalloped outline from contact to contact above the survey line. Now that we're familiar with some of the major connectors, let's go over lingual plating. A piece of the major connector called the lingual plate can be extended onto the lingual surface of maxillary anterior teeth in order to splint them in case that they are periodontally weakened. Now, this is a lot of plates and we know that's a little confusing, so it's important to distinguish between the lingual plate major connector for mandibular arches, the palatal plate major connector for the maxillary arch, and lingual plating on the maxillary major connector's anterior teeth. It's if lingual plating is used for maxillary major connectors, it's important to take into consideration some of the same features used for a mandibular lingual plate. For example, rust should be placed at both ends of the lingual plating of a maxillary major connector. Lingual plating of maxillary contact. anterior teeth also follows a similar outline by going from contact to contact above the cingulums of the anterior teeth and above the survey lines of the posterior teeth. Another consideration to take into account when making lingual plates for maxillary major connectors is to avoid interfering with the occlusion, as this is an area where incisors might contact. Now let's move on to minor connectors, and we'll start with their function. Minor connectors can function as a connection between the major connector and the clasp assemblies. They can also connect the major connector to the rusts. Minor connectors could also be part of the approach arm for bar clasps. 
They can also be used as an acrylic resin retention element, like a meshwork shown here, or a lattice. Minor connectors are rigid, and because they are rigid, they can provide reciprocation, like this clasp assembly here. We hope this was helpful, and we'll see you next time in another RPD video.